Look out. Footy's back. Oh, geez, yes it is. I'm Dane Beams. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm James Clements. I don't have any sleeve tattoos. Yes. Not until the baggers win the flag. Anyway, this is the AFL Today Show. It is our midweek madness show before round 18 kicks off. And joining me, as always, are a couple of local dingai. You might call them dinguses, local weirdos, AFL experts. Some might say Alex Donnelly over there, a very angry, fired up, just ball-punching Swans fan. Alex, how are you feeling? Uh, the system's let me down, Jim, but it's okay. We're going to appeal it because Isaac Heaney was robbed and he's going to get off tonight. <laughs> well, sure thing. Maybe uh, it's tomorrow. I don't know. In between, we've got a very small Ruse fan who's up and about. <laughs> it's the stats boy, Liam McGillian. I don't know I've got that, but I'm up and about, lads. Ruse, flag Ruse 2025. We're back. Get around them. We're going to make the eight somehow this year still. We're just They're going to win the VFL flag. We're going to win the VFL flag. We're going to beat Sydney this week. Most AFLW, important team in the comp. Maybe? AFLW, definitely. Just AFLW, yeah. I've actually had 20 bucks on the Kangaroos to win this weekend. That, that is not job. smart. Uh, we also have friend of the program, James Robottom from the yeah. Sydney Swans, joining awesome. us today as well, which is really good. Uh, it's a really fun chat. He gives us a couple of really good little nuggets in there too. Uh, he enjoyed it, I think. I hope. Fingers he, crossed. He loved I reckon it. he did. You nicknamed him in the first four seconds. Yeah, he hated you, but he loved me, which is <laughs> ironic because you're the Swans fan. It's just weird. You were just being weird the entire time. <laughs> Either way, so you better stick around for the chat with James Robottom. And, of course, get around the AFL Today Show's socials. What are basically your YouTubes, your faces, your IGs, your not threads. TikTok. TikTok. X. All the good stuff. Like right and subscribe, please. Yes. Do it. Or we'll send Stats Boy out to get you. Yep. All right. Can you smell it? Footy's back. It's time for the midweek news ticker. The news ticker. <laughs> the news ticker for Wednesdays is the most fun. Because it's always fun, yeah. We got someone sacked. Yeah. It's not I mean, Ken. Oh. we didn't. No, we didn't. His <laughs> players basically did. Yes. Uh, so Adam Simpson noted actual, you know, Premiership winning coach has been fired. Well, North Legend. We've decided to part ways. About a week ago, it did not seem like he was deciding to part ways. And here he is, parting ways. It's Smithers with the gun behind his back saying, it's mutual. Say it's no, mutual. They said in the th- Tell he, everyone it's mutual. They came out this morning that he didn't want to go. They said, yeah, you're gone. He's That's, like, can you please give me to the end of my contract? And they're like, no, oh, mate. Sorry, you're out. It's a tough one. So you saw the back or well, the front page, I think, of the West Australian, right? Of yep. the win, yeah. loss, 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 loss. Just a re- and saying, see you, Simo, or whatever it is, right? This is one of the grossest parts of the AFL ecosystem, right? Mm-hmm. When a coach gets sacked, I think this is quite abhorrent for the simple fact that he is a premiership coach. Yeah. One of three in West Coast history. Yeah. Exactly. So it should be celebrated. So for the amount of time and effort that he's put into this gig and for the fact that he took them to the ultimate prize, deserves a lot more respect. Surely it's like, sorry to see you go, but thanks for the memories. Thanks for the memories. Yeah. You like, just, you just it's, gotta, it's you gotta go full, with, go with, full Fallout Boy. Thanks for the yeah. memories. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the memories. Love that. That's all you're gonna do. Just go full Fallout Boy. And it's weird that he was committed to the rebuild. Like, what do you expect yeah. from the team? Like, are you showing anything for moments there this season? They have shown a lot. They've shown more. We've talked about this list time and time and time again. There is nothing in the creamy middle. It is like I think they're recruiting old, desolate. Yeah. It's old vets, mm. some of whom are very not good anymore, and a bunch of young kids, some of whom aren't that good anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What do you expect to happen? So the fact that they've already got a couple of wins under the belt is pretty interesting this year. The biggest problem is obviously they've fallen off a cliff in the yeah. last like month and a half. So they've looked they've looked as bad as they did last year. Not getting beaten as badly, but it's just it. Going forward, you're just like this group. I think sucks. it's yeah. I think it's time for a change anyway. Like we, I don't know, a new coach might turn around some of those guys that no. go aren't that good. I just I don't think, think that list is very good. This but is the could... point. I think you give him to the end of the year anyway. Yeah, like, I, I agree don't with think that. there's yeah. much point behind sacking him around 17, no. and going. Yeah, look what we saw when we got belted at the MCG by Melbourne. That was the tipping point. Well, it yeah. makes no sense. It this, was is all, yeah. this is all That's list weird. management problems, right? Not I trading agree. Andrew Gaff when you had the chance. Coaching is moving on from other dudes. It goes back to the Tim Kelly trade. Sure. Yeah, where they put everything in. They threw everything at Tim Kelly. Yeah. And then they made the finals and then COVID hit. And then there was a halfway point of that first COVID year where they they made the finals in that. In 2021, they were eight and five going into the bye. And since then, they're they're eight from 60. Yep. Like, what happened in that bye? I don't know. Jack Darling got really old. (laughs) Maybe they went to an Adelaide Crows training camp. I was about to say, Jack Darling was an anti vaxxer. He wasn't playing. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Might have been the problem. He and Liam Jones can start up their own team. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Either way, the point being, I think you look at those sort of big questions like Jack Darling and Co. That's the thing that's hamstrung them the most. I think Jack Darling's been a shell of himself. 
Like he was Gaffer's the only one making an effort in the forward line on Sunday, though. He was. It was okay. At the same yeah. time, that pops up every so yeah. often. The rest of the time, he's been horrible. This yeah. Year. yeah. Yes. Like. Without- no one could have done a better job than what Simpson had done in these 17 rounds so far this year. No one coming in at the start of this year would have been able to do a better job. He was basically a dead man walking all yep. season. It was just a matter of when they were going to pull the trigger. And, I'm not, I'm not going to cry too yeah. much. Like, get your pay out. One point yeah, five. He, he gets a lot of money to do nothing now. So well, that's what I mean. Like, it's the greatest job in the world. We've talked about this on the NBA on NBA Australia time after time. My favorite job in the world would be to be sacked Detroit <laughs> Pistons coach. <laughs> Five years, Which anyone 60, can do. Five years, 64. I will pay me $8 million right now to not yeah. coach the Detroit Pistons. I'll take that. That's, <laughs> That's right. Manchester United coach. Pay up. Yeah. It's good. Chelsea I'll, coach. I'll go, I'd go there. Yeah. yeah. So Adam Simpson, fare thee well. Like, it is interesting because he do throw out the simple idea of, like, he'd been there, what, 11 years? 11 years, yep. And you look at Ken. Uh, is he Knuff? It's been. Bevo. Well, Bevo actually, yeah, won a flag and has been there longer now. Simple idea, though, is, like, Adam Simpson has the flag. Ken. Hasn't made a grand final and is still there. At least that team's looking like they're pointing in the right direction now. Yeah. But it's always, more always fun where you go, oh, well, this guy got sacked and this guy's still hanging out. Because you'll never dare us to boo, they say. Ah, <laughs> oh, can you feel the culture there in Port Adelaide? <laughs> Everything is hunky dory all of a sudden again. I don't know He's about definitely going to get fired after yeah. the season. Anyway. <laughs> Who goes more. next, Bevo or Ken? I uh, think Ken might be shuffled out the door this year if they don't make the grand final. Yeah, I think I'd, they're not going to make oh, the I don't grand exactly. final. So I don't think I either think of them are going to go now. I reckon both of them could go. Maybe. If they miss the finals, the dogs, Bevo could be out the door too. If they miss the finals, I reckon Ken's gone too for Port. Interesting. Mm. Righto. Other news. Might have heard a little bit about this one, Main, mainly because, like, I don't know, Alex has been whinging about it for the last 48 <laughs> hours straight. Uh, Heen Man. Heen Man. Ba, 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 ba. You're out a week. Ba, 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 ba. You need to get a better lawyer, son. Just yeah, where's saying. the? You need the Italian uh, that's, Carlton Mafia that's lawyers. This, yeah. That's like the first, apart from the Luke Parker one, where they tried to get downgraded from six to four. That's the first one the Swans have gone to and lost in like three years. Yeah, I do like the Carlton one though. It's like it'd be a real shame if you didn't get Cripper off, wouldn't it? Just <laughs> saying, <laughs> clink, clink. Yeah. Um, they are appealing this again though. Yeah, the Swans. So get, he'll get off. I'm not. I would not be surprised if tomorrow when we're doing the Thursday night team show, Heaney is playing for the Swans. Yeah. Oh, I hope he doesn't. Being a North fan, yeah. if he doesn't play, we're going to win. So, yeah. yeah. No, uh, that's, that's not true at all. Yeah. I'm not saying I'll be honest. I've actually had 20 bucks on North to win this weekend. Are you all right? $10 and the line's 50 points. No, you could spend $20 on lots of much better things than yeah, that. Yeah, but it's, it's doing it. $20. It's exactly, exactly, yeah. But it's doing, it's doing the gym. Charlie Give Cameron's going to kick it back. 20 bucks. No, so, no, I've had 20 bucks on them to win. I've had 20 bucks at North with a 50 point head start. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, that's not going to happen. The thing is, they can sort of just switch in Callum Mills. Yeah, this one's literal their best player. Comes back into the team. He's so important to the structure. It's crazy. If, if he was playing last week against St Kilda, I think the Swans would have been able to shut that game down and win it. Mm-hmm. He brings in a lot, lot of class, poise, and just just a senior head. Well, if we had get a Callum Mills, we would have beaten St Kilda. The bottom four St Kilda. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hard. It's imagine hard the imagine losing there, like, on the weekend, Jeez. lads. I haven't even yeah, done that. Yeah, but just hold on. 16th, second. Nah, you're only first. as good as your last game. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and uh, and <laughs> yeah I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's good to see Callum Mills back because apparently his body was cooked halfway through the year. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Very it's good. gonna be great. Also, I'm just we need more gingers in the team. Oh, uh, in the entire AFL. Yeah. Like, that's all Do we, we, Aaron Francis yeah. has been good in the twos, apparently. Right. Oh, other news: Josh Carmichael's retired due to concussions. Oh. That's the fourth one this year. That this is sucks. yeah, fourth player due okay. to medical issues. It's been more than ever, which is really sad. I don't know. I'm just saying. Just we're probably aching towards a future where we go. You know, we should all be wearing Headgear. helmets. Simple no, but they that. don't. Right now, the helmets they have don't help. They've already. That's why people don't wear them. NFL, they NFL literally... helmets. Let's go, boys! Oh. Oh, Bang! No. They're bad as well. Just imagine Brain and Maynard a killer guy. The AFL that's... helmets have been scientifically proven to not work. For oh. a concussion. That's why no one uses them. Harvey Thomas is going to punch you in the face. No, nice. Darcy Jones, you mean? That no. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> well done, everybody. Uh, speaking of injuries, though, Maximus Aurelius Gornicus. Oh. Out two to three weeks now. So we had this breaking on the Supercoach show on Monday. Yep. Uh, that it literally came across the news sticker. Now we're doing the news sticker on a Wednesday. Came out that he was in a moon boot. Yep. Now he's like, oh, maybe a week. Now it's like two to three weeks. He's well, like, but I'm going to rush back. And you're like, yeah, they might need to rush you back. Or they m- may be cooked by the time he gets I back. I reckon anyway. even if he's yeah hobbling out there, he'll try and play in the next one or two weeks just because they need him to make finals. I don't think they're going to make finals, yeah, but nope, they need yeah. they need him. Otherwise, they're cooked. 
they are probably cooked regardless. Yes. Mm. I think that's where it sort of sits. Yep. And Gorn might be like, ah, in two weeks' time, it's not going to matter. L- let's have some surgery and clean it up. Yep. Nice one. Uh, speaking of other injuries, the Blues, TDK, my beloved Tom DeConing. He's got an injury, injured ankle, so there's a test for that this week. Yeah. And same for Weeders, who I think copped a big knock on his quad. He was hobbling around with that against yeah, it was a big corky. Corky. Yep. Um Also, Jack Martin, I thought he had an ankle and now it's a hamstring. I think it's also a calf. Just everything. Jack, <laughs> lower body Jack Concussion Martin. as well. Jack yeah. Martin should literally just get the ice hockey designation, lower body injury. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's all of it. Yeah. We're not going to tell you which part because it's just. <laughs> oh, He's always, there. why is he always injured? It's just a walking wounded. To be honest, the way Zach Williams has played, I'm like, you take, don't need Take him, your yeah. time, Jack Martin. It's true. Take yeah. your time. It's true. Uh, and the other big one coming out of the weekend was obviously Mitch Lewis's ACL. This right. was so, brutal. I it think we. We sort of hit on it very, very quickly on the Sunday night show. Yeah. And mm. it's just like, yeah, this really sucks. Well, because he got concussed and I know, I don't know. He the, passed the concussion test. He passed test. the concussion Well, it looked like he got concussed because he just literally fell, fell. But if he didn't fall like that, he wouldn't have done yeah. his knee, which was sad. And he's had so many injuries, such a promising player. He's one of, the, yeah, one of the most exciting yeah. forwards and we're not going to see him for another 12 months. Brutal. It stinks. Yeah. I also find it weird that, uh, so, you know, sports medicine – I do love in US sports, we go, oh, an ACL. It's like, it's a nine month injury. In Australia, it's, ah, it's 12 months. It's well, they like, say 12 months, and then lots of the players do come back in like yeah, 10. Because I think we've got Dan McStay looking like he may be sort of edging towards a return for the Pies at some point. Will Ashcroft forward. came back three weeks ago. That would have been about 10 months. Yep. Yep. So it's nice. Hey, Windhager also did his hammy. Yep. Oh, this is just. There's so many injuries this week. Oh. I think we actually went through all the injuries on the Supercoach show on Monday. Yeah. And yeah. Like basically breaking down how. There is feasible teams out there that have like all six of the major injuries this week, like or suspensions, which is like Heaney, Rankin, yeah. Gorn, McGovern, uh, Took Miller, Jeremy McGovern, McGovern yeah. etc. Speaking of McGovern, I called it the other day. He's driving back. Yeah. He's going across the Nullarbor. Ring, ding, 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 ding. All the way across he goes. He's not in the that guard. That was, that was very funny. Not in the guard. Yeah. Not yeah. in the guard. Not in the guard. Because that goes that way. Yeah. He's going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it that way? Uh Yeah. He's to wish. So his, his wife flew to Adelaide to sit in the car with him for three days. <laughs> Stuff that. Punish. Yeah. He's probably going to be sore in the car as well. Yeah, right, what, have to what get type injured. of car did he get? I, I want them that. Like, did they get a Land Cruiser so they can lie down in the back? And... Was it an Uber? Maybe it was an Uber? Nah. Don't know. But I love the idea. <laughs> as long as it's not like one of those little hairdresser cars. Yeah, not like <laughs> a little Kia. <laughs> Nice one. All right, midweek winner and loser of the week. Very easily the loser of the week was a fan who was out there racially abusing uh, Isaac Rankine. Yep. Uh, what a real dick. loser because... Also a real dummy. Real dummy. I also love that he was referred to as an aspiring podcaster. That's what Stats Boy is as well. <laughs> hey, the same hey, time. hey, this is a great podcast. So we, Thank you. I'm more than aspiring. And you're aspiring to be better. Yeah. On <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You need to aspire to be a better host. Wow. Yeah. Just right, put it out there. Stats yeah. got, he's, Constructive he's, criticism. He's got that one win. He's just like, come here. Pow, pow, pow. Yeah, North confidence it. is flowing through North me. North win one game and suddenly <laughs> just laying it out on the table. Thump. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, got his membership revoked. AFL membership. Which is very good. Good. He shouldn't be uh, allowed anywhere near it. No, this is the better part. Wait till we get and because there. Because he's a giant dummy. He had his IG and LinkedIn profiles on his like uh, social media uh, pages. And that's one that'll probably stick with you for a little His LinkedIn bit. says open to work. You're going to be open to work for a long time, <laughs> pal. He deserves yeah. it. Deleted all of his uh, social media accounts. They still got him. So that's good. Had an interview with Channel 7. He's like, oh, I was drunk. I'm sorry. It's like, yeah, it's not an excuse. Imagine, no. yeah, trying to justify that in, a, in an interview. That's not, that's not going to work. Just saying. I drink a lot. Don't racially abuse players. Yeah. No. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Just don't do it. You call people war criminals, but that's not. <laughs> that's not racially yeah. motivated. That's just facts. <laughs> yeah. I'm just spitting truth. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, and then the big winner could be, feasibly, if Isaac Heaney does get rubbed out for this one week, if it does actually get held upheld at appeal, uh, Patrick Cripps obviously yeah. is actually leading the Brownlow, which we'll get to in a second. Um, after we chat to James Rowbottom, uh, we are talking still Brownlow, still talking Coleman as well as Yeah Nas in today's show. But Cripps is looking like one of the three probably winners out of this. It's probably Bont, Cripps, Lockie Neal. I'd most say likely. Dacos as well. Uh, up until the last couple of weeks, I reckon Dacos yeah. was up there. Not so much now. Bont, I think, is a bit behind, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll talk about that in a second. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Two-time Brownlow winner, Patty Cripps. Let's go. Right, let's do some Yeah Nas. AFL Today shows Yeah Nas for today. Should Adam Simpson have seen out the year? Yeah Nas. Big yeah. 
what was the, there's no point. They're not going to change on the ladder between now and the end of the year. What is it? Six weeks or something like that. That was very strange. I don't I'm know what yeah. you're going to learn about this no. team. Like you go, oh, we're new, bring in some like, new coaches, a yeah. new structure. We'll figure it out. Who can stick on the list? You should know that already. What are you doing? Like you can sort stuff like that out in preseason. You've got the whole preseason. You can have all these meetings about it. I don't understand why they're changing. I'm it. saying uh, nah, because it also allows them to start the process of finding their new coach now. So basically come the end of the season, bang, here's our new coach. As final start, we're ready to go. That person can come in and just clean that list out. Also, in the next seven weeks, you can try whatever the hell you want. Harley Reid is your coach on field. Let's yes. go. Harley Reid at full forward. Let's go. You can do whatever you want because it's like... Harley Reid with a headset on, headset on the wing. Yeah. So this Why is not? my entire point. Harley Reid, player coach. Yeah. Let's go. We yeah. did that, we, yeah, we we did that yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. absolutely love this idea yeah. of the player coach. Just get him out there. Just <laughs> give him the keys to the car. Just let him That's what him. I mean. It's like you can do anything over the next seven weeks and no one's going to care if you lose the next seven games. It's like, oh, well, this is just, we've given up. Yep. Nice one. We've got it sent in another one. If Sheezer was playing at a better club, would we be, be comparing him Ooh. to Nick Dacos? Yeah, nah. Well, they both look like they're 12 years old. I so find those maybe. Stats, actually. Yeah. Hang on. I actually don't mind this. Stats boy, give us some stats. I need to find it quickly so you can yeah. probably talk for a little. Oh, here it is. So but after their first 39 games, same disposals. Uh, meters gained slightly a favor to Nick Dacos. Contested possessions, uh, Chiesel has more, and, and then Dacos has more score involvements. But it's very even, all their stats after the first 39 games. So maybe if he was at a bigger club, I reckon, yeah. I he should get be. his props. What would the club be to get those props? If Collingwood is very handy. Yeah, Collingwood, you get the shine, you got the Dacos yeah. name. So if you're not, if you're Harry Chiesel and you're on a different club, how what, would what you club? be compared? I think it needs exactly. to be a Which, top six what club, club of last... Of so we're saying Do Richmond make that list? No. Not this current Richmond, no. Uh, Melbourne. Hawthorne? No, uh, because also, again, they would low last year and they're just rising up this year. I reckon if he was at Melbourne. I think Richmond, team, maybe. I think it's just any club that has a I'm bigger just looking at Adelaide teams. Maybe Melbourne or Essendon. Hmm. Essendon, he would have already won two brown loads. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> He'd be their captain. Should the AFL introduce red cards? <sighs> My good friend Luke Hodge thinks so. This yeah, is the nah. biggest We're... hypocrite going around. Luke Hodge asking for red cards. Wait, what? He should have got a lot of red cards in his uh, in his time if we're talking red cards. I will not hear. I like Luke Hodge. He's a our person. good friend. I like Luke Hodge. How dare you besmirch <laughs> his name? I see. No, he knows. He would. I He's he going to smash that. you next time. Nah, he'll agree. With friend me. of the show, Luke yeah, Hodge. I love him. And you're out here just slamming him. <laughs> yeah. I said it's just funny that he's talking about red cards. No wonder you get funny. no mates. That's <laughs> oh yeah, right. I'll make no mates. This <laughs> you, guy. You, well, you guys just talk about mates. Just just always meet your mates. Apparently, Hodge's your mate, or this guy's your mate. Well, he is. Oh yeah, sure. Prove me wrong. Yeah. I talk about this all the time. It's basically AFL media roulette bingo. Or bingo. It's just like, yeah, we well, go to the bingo card for this year, week. Yeah. Oh, Red card. State of origin. Yeah. Hey, let's <laughs> so talk about it. We'll have the week off before the grand final soon as well. Yeah. Get week off before the grand off. final. Hey. The sub rule. Always Red cards. <laughs> hey. And away you go. Night time grand final. Yeah, that's it. Nice. The no. AFL, I think the red card thing, I've talked about this before. I think there is at least scope for it where if there's, if you're being reported on the field, I think there should be at least a system where they go, you have basically done an act of war, Braden Maynard. <laughs> off you go. Like, there's I think probably there's specific... one or two of them a year. So you exactly. think the Jimmy Webster, area. Area. Jimmy Webster and Jai Simpkin, red card. Red yep. card, exactly. Um, and you don't think that this would actually probably, I think if there is the threat of that actually happening, it becomes more of a preventative measure as well. So I actually mm. kind of like that aspect of like, we already know the head is sacrosanct. You're not going to pay for it or you'll pay for it after the fact, you're now literally going to pay for it in the moment, which I actually so like. So I think with with the red card, no. is it you're down to 17 players or that plays out and then the sub just replaces them? Sub has to come straight on. Okay. Uh, but the, we, we argue literally every week on this, AF, on this show about uh, the tribunal and their decisions with that. Then we're going to argue way more if there's uh, red cards I because a red card could be out for something and then the week later you're can like... Can of worms? Yeah, I, exactly. I think just leave it be because we're going to make what way more What business are we in, <laughs> Stats Boy? The content business. Give me more stuff to yell about. Should he have been red carded? No, oh, I don't want to be more angry was, at AFL. Let's go. <laughs> I love the idea. And then finally, actually, there was another one I want to throw out there. Yeah. State of origin. It's all well and good. You know what I think is past its used by date, though, for AFL terms is probably state of origin. Like, in terms of calling it that? or yeah. Just go, oh, well, we'll get Queensland playing Victoria. We'll go the Allies versus Victoria. Screw that. All-star game. Yeah. 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 I've said that I've said that before. Definitely should. So have you set game. Patrick Cripps as your captain and Lockie well, Neal, just as in, you know, you've got a Melbourne captain and someone from out of Melbourne. All-star game and they have to pick it schoolyard style. I love this. Yeah, that's what they did in the NBA. Exactly. Yeah, they've been there for a couple of years in the NBA. Love this idea. 
All right, who, you, who are you picking for? You're Patrick Cripps. You have the first pick of every player in the AFL. Who are you picking? Charlie Curno. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not rocking that bike ever. I'm like, you're my best friend. You are coming with me, sir. That is very done. I thought he was going to say like Zach Williams. Yeah. Or something. Oh, no, I was waiting for him to say. Harry oh, McCoy. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you probably, that's it. Bond and Cripps on the same team is unfair. It's awesome, though. Like, my yeah, favorite but, thing but is then walking in your guys, Chad Warner. Yeah. But you look at this and go, who's the other opposing captain if it is, say, Bond? Bond like, or Lockheed. Who's the problem. first one to pick Nick Dacos? Like, that's sort of fun mm. stuff, right? I love this idea. Yeah. And then all the Carlton fans go, how dare you pick Nick Dacos <laughs> on your team? He's like, dude, I'm trying to win. <laughs> exactly. This is why we're in the content business. AFL, think about but it. All star game. Would Let's the, go. Would the AFL all star game quickly turn into a fast like the NBA one is where we just don't have much defense? Tackling to be or... honest, it's a lot harder for a fast to break out in an AFL game than it is in a basketball game because you literally just go, well, there's 18 dudes on a field. Yeah. Half of them are going to be like, I actually want to try. Well, they what did are we doing? the bushfire one. When was that? About three or four oh, years I can't ago. Remember that and one. they went, it was in January and yeah. now or February. I and they it. were going really hard at it. So it might be like that. Good one. All right. Final one. Is the top eight already set? Ooh, oh, I yeah. Are we going to miss out on Collingwood, Melbourne, Western Bulldogs? Um, yeah, nah. No, you idiots. Who nah. wrote this one? This is dumb as because no, there's two wins separating. Second through 10th. There's three games separating second through 13. Compare that to last year. There were two 14-2 uh, and two game teams, right? There yep. was really, really pointy end. Everything else under that was Wasn't actually more spread three out. three teams from like round 10 that were out of the eight that made it? Sydney, Carlton, and GWS? Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's my entire point. So there are three teams out of the eight at this exact moment in time of last year's like actual season. Right now, round 17. They were all out of the They eight. were all out they of the were, eight. They were. That's and right. They I got $11 dollars out the Swans making the finals. Yeah. Carlton, yeah. Sydney, awesome. GWS all made it. Uh, we saw, I think, Geelong fall out, Western Bulldogs fall out, and Essendon fall out. Right. <laughs> so, And this is it. The gap wasn't even this close. Between four and ten, it was two wins. There was a huge gap, two yeah. through 14. Uh, to yeah. 15, I think. Two through 15 was actually even didn't, bigger. Didn't like the Swans, GWS, count all win like seven in a they row? Did, yeah, like GWS wild. did. Port but, was on more than double the points of Sydney at this exact point in 14th. So yeah. this year is so much more closer than it was last year. And we had three of the eight change last year. And that was with basically the top four locked in mm. at this point. Yeah. So And really right now that. you think the top two are locked in? I think Maybe. the only I team. Would, I would not even say the top two are locked in. Carlton yeah. are on 44 points. They're two points ahead of both Freo and I believe Essendon. Uh, Essendon well, Port, that would right? be, uh, if, if Carlton miss out on the top four, that would be hilarious. No, no, no. Because the they thought they were going to win the flag and then they don't even take the top four. They can still win the flag. I oh, know, I'm just saying it would be funny if they missed top four. It's a lot of chatter from a room. Why are you not Just saying. You, you can, you anyway, can point up. being, like, two is not locked in. Like, there's no one no, apart I, from basically the Swans locked in. I, agree. I think the Swans I, are locked in or top two if they slip up. No, they've got, fine, no, they've got Brisbane next week. If they slip up in that game and Carlton win their next two, it's just, yeah. I think the Swans the only one locked into a certain position. So this question. Nah, because oh, yeah. a lot can change over seven rounds of footy. We Who do you think coming in? I, I think the only team, though, that can come in, I don't rate Melbourne Bulldogs or Gold Coast. Gold Coast had to win on the weekend. The only team I think that are going to come in is Collingwood over GWS. I, I don't. I think the top seven. Wait, like, you think the Giants are going to – did you not see them? I know you, were drunk, I know you were drunk on Saturday night and you were like hey, absolutely hey, hey, hey. paralytic. I was fine. Uh, the tsunami, dude. That yeah, was, I know, but it's been one week. Show me. Again, but prove it. Like, this, time, this time last year. That's mm. exactly my point. You could have said this about like basically three of the teams in that top eight. I well, as I said, mean. they're between two and like. No, I know, I know, but I'm saying those, my opinion. Of those next yeah. teams down, four and ten. You I, could think have said that about Adela- I think Port Adelaide are the ones, if if there's a team to fall out of this top eight right now, I think it's Port Adelaide. And then if somehow all hell goes like goes to Geelong and they just drop out of nowhere, like if Dangerfield goes down again. I think Geelong top four. I yeah, think. so do I. I think Geelong will make the top four. Like I did a ladder predictor earlier and I had Geelong fourth. So okay. I think nice I had... No, I actually had Gold Coast jumping in. Hell. Because I had them beating West Coast and Richmond. Winning at home, beating West Coast and Richmond. Yeah. Basically, the top eight is not even close to being locked in. (laughs) Right. Now let's go to our chat with James Rowbottom from the Sydney Swans. It's a ripper chat. Stick around for it. It is very fun. Very, very interesting. Alex just, he's just sitting there pantsless the entire time. So don't, (laughs) don't tell James that that happened. But he was. It was a bit weird. It was a bit gross, but still. It's a very fun one. Yeah. He, uh. Gave us a little nugget. It is stuck in. It's very fun. James Bo- Rowbottom, right now. All right, joining us on AFL today, it's a brand new friend of the show. Absolutely. He's been clamoring to join us, I reckon, is James Rowbottom <laughs> from the Sydney Swans. What is going on, James? Hey, first of all, though, can we say, what nickname have we got here? What can we call you? Uh, I've got no real uh, good story or nickname for you. Just Rowie gets uh, thrown around pretty stock standard. Um 
I can't remember anything. <laughs> it's a simple free, Australian but... way of just just making everything shorter. Yeah, exactly right. I think we could figure this out and just yeah. start calling him bum cheeks or something. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> row bottom. But, I don't know. I, of course, just, uh, cheeks. Cheeks. Day, nothing, I haven't, nothing I haven't heard before. So. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just thinking like this is just straight high school. Off we go. Just cheeks works for me. Anyway, um, incredible year for you and of course the Swans so far. Like 13 and two uh, from. Last year's sort of really sort of solid performance, making the finals, oh, just a really tough loss to the Blues. You hate to see it, just saying. But what's been the biggest difference this year in your opinion? Um, I think, honestly, it started um, in the off-season, the pre-season. Everyone um, sort of went to work and was pretty disappointed with where we um, left ourselves last year. Um, and so, yeah, I think it started then. We've built a really good connection and and work ethic over the first half of the year. So hopefully we can, we can um, keep that going. I think the easiest answer there is to go Brody Grundy. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it, it helps. Yeah, I mean, just have, been, having that dude and his hair yeah. in there is awesome, right? Like that's what it's all about. Just go, look at that hair. Look at that glorious mane. He's just a good dude. I feel like that changes the entire vibe, doesn't it? Yeah, he's been, as you said, unbelievable um, on and off the field of – Lent on him a lot, and he's been, um, as you said, a massive part as to why we are where we are. Seems like a dude that you could just go into Newtown with and have like seven coffees and never get bored. Like Brody Grundy gives the most Newtown vibe of any of the Swans. Yeah, I think I think he hit the nail on the head. I don't think he would have ventured um, into Newtown just yet, but I took him into um, uh, Surrey Hills the other day, and he even um, felt a bit more at home in Surrey. <laughs> thought it was a bit more Melbourne and. Um, yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. He'd like uh, Newtown a lot. Yeah, I've got a lot of time for Surrey Hills. A lot of good pubs in yeah. that vibe. Like, you know, music. I was a music journalist yeah. for so many years. All the music place, like literally all of the uh, music companies in Sydney are based around there for a very good reason. The boozing's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Outside of that, like, you know, we've hit on nicknames. We've hit on Brody Grundy. Yeah. Is there a competition to have the coolest hair at the Swans? Because I feel like you're right there. Brody's right there. Whoa, Errol is right there. What are the other best head? Swaps? Chad Warner's haircut last year at the start of the year, not there, but maybe Lizard's mullet. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say there's a competition, but um, everyone's just very comfortable um, being themselves, I guess, and there's no no sort of judgment or picking on anyone, and everyone just sort of rocks with whatever they feel comfortable with. And, um, yeah, there are a couple of flash hairdos getting around, but no, it doesn't really get mentioned too often. I mean, I feel like that's a missed opportunity because yeah. I think across the board, the Swans might have like one of the nicest collection of haircuts in the AFL. A lot of handsome dudes as well. Yeah, I'll pay that. <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah, thank you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, it's a simple one because we had this teed up is who does spend the most time in front of the mirror because we want to get the fun stuff out of the way before we hit some serious notes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure this is going to be to uh, any surprise, but Haynes probably... Yeah. Um, spends the, the most time in front of the mirror and um, I think daylight's then second. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think Isaac's at the top of the list. I love that because I think I was at the uh, the Boomers game here uh, this week and in the front row just in front of me yeah. were uh, the De Konings, oh, yes. Jamara and uh, Ollie Dempsey, just, you know, a bunch of the sort of the Cats dudes, a couple of the other young dudes. And none of them put in any effort. Like, this is the thing that stuck out to me here, Rowie. I'm just like, what are we doing? You're rocking out, you're front and centre, front, you know, the absolute front row, and you're just rocking a hoodie and a couple of beanies and stuff. I don't know, that's shocking gear, in my opinion. <laughs> you can't get away with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I do a bit more of this, the serious side of things. So you re-signed during the, well, a couple of months ago for four more years till 2028. So it's like yourself, Errol, Will Haywood, Ollie Florent, Lizard, and even to a other degree, uh, Haynes and Mills, they're signed on to like t between 2028 and 2030. Is there something that's sort of just discussed between the boys? Like not monetary, but it's like, hey, this is pretty sick. Let's all stick together and try and build something. Yeah, we actually did have a, um, we had a lunch at the start of the year and a group of us who have um, out of contract or coming out of contract got together and just spoke about um, what we could create um, together and, um, as you said, nothing um, to a monetary value, but just in terms of sticking together and the relationship that we already have built. And, and we're still all so young. Um, myself, Nick, Errol, um, Tommy McCartan, um, are all still under 23 years of age. Um, so it's a pretty exciting time for the club and um, to lock away a couple of those boys um, into the future is, um, yeah, pretty important. Is it also something to deal with like during the season? 
like I think you sort of see how it sort of rolled across. How hard is it to sort of block out the noise for like mm. the folks who haven't re-signed and then suddenly their name's been kicked around left, right and centre? Like, who was it? It was like Will, it was Logan, that well, sort of stuff. Logan and Chad at the moment. And Logan and Chad. Like, so how hard is it to block that out? Yeah, we're, we're pretty good at um, taking all those sort of um, comments in the media with a grain of salt. Um, nothing sort of gets said officially, so you can't really take anything on board and, and the boys are really good at um, just being open with us and chatting if anything actually does happen. So... Um, a lot of it's speculation throughout the year. Um, no one really knows what's going on until anything's actually been put put to paper. So um, the boys are really good at um, just moving on and leaving. Most of them get just leave their managers to deal with it in the club and don't really have uh, an overly big uh, amount of influence on it. Does it help that being in Sydney just away from that bubble overall? Because next door you've got the Roosters and they're just having the year from hell and, you know, who knows what uh, Brandon Smith's doing at, at any which time. And you're just like... Yeah, we're top of the ladder. We're cool over here. You deal with that, boys. It's just, it feels like WA is trying to push the narrative of bring the boys home. I'm like, but Sydney beaches are way better. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's a massive benefit of being in Sydney and um, playing AFL here is you are um, removed from that um, sort of bubble, as you said, and um, you can roll down to uh, a pub or the beach and, and not really get noticed and, um, you can remove yourself from the AFL environment, whereas um, in other states across Australia, you might be stuck with that um, persona wherever you go. So it's definitely a positive and, um, yeah, it gives us a good chance to um, wind down and turn, up, turn off from footy every now and again. I had that. I When I used to live in Bondi, I walked into a cafe one morning and I saw Buddy, Luke Parker and Josh Kennedy. I was like... I'm going to a different cafe. So did they recognize you though? Or <laughs> no, no? I, I just walked away. So, oh, so they didn't recognize yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> I didn't yeah. want to bother them. I'm like, oh, yep, see you out. <laughs> nice. I'm just glad that they didn't yeah. bail you up and just like really harangue you. Um, <laughs> but speaking of which, is there a Swans group chat, Rowie? What are we doing here? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah there's, uh, there's a couple that float around. Um, there's a, obviously a whole team one, which uh, bits and pieces get thrown into every now and again with a couple of ongoing uh, jokes. And if anything... This happening externally, but because um, we a lot of us are from um, interstate, so we uh, don't, a lot of us don't have many friends outside of the footy club. Once we once we get here, so um, regardless of group chat, um, we're pretty stuck together. And um, once we leave the club, we tend to hang out all together anyway. So um, group chat gets a bit of a workout, and um, yeah, can tease some stuff up. Nice one. Do you have anyone who's like really obnoxious yeah. on the group chat like Alex is? Like uh, he is shocking. So, I mean, I'm just assuming it's uh, it's the lizard and probably Papley, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not too far from the truth. Um, Jazzy McEnany's another, he was another one that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, <laughs> pretty outwardly spoken in the group chat, and, uh, which can get received the wrong way sometimes. It's all, all in a good laugh. I love it. Yeah. Alex is shocking. Just, no, uh, yeah. It's gross. Anyway, yeah. Um, the other one, I think Alex has uh, brought this up a couple of times on our show. It seems weird to think about, but you've not received a Brownlow vote? How is this possible? You're in, in and amongst it. You're in the guts of the damn thing. What are we doing here, Ups? Come <laughs> on, James. Get it sorted. Yeah, what are we doing? I've, uh, it's brought, been brought up a couple more times this year, but I, I've said that I wear it as a bit of a badge of honour. Um, I kind of like the. Well, <laughs> me too. I, I've actually and... received no brown logos as well, so <laughs> yeah. we're equal basically. Yeah. So I like this. Yeah, exactly this is good. Right. Yeah, no, no, I, think... I, I love it that it's getting a bit of traction, and um, yeah, if I can get through this year without another one, that'd uh, that'd be that'd be all right. What happens if you get three in some random game that cost Haynes the brown <laughs> no, It's the Joel and Marty three pay. votes last year that cost Errol the brown low. That's right, and Marty yeah, did it exactly. last year. So I was at Angie a few weeks ago, standing in the rain at that end that has just no stand over the top of it for some reason. But every time I moved, GWS would start kicking goals. So in the last quarter, I just stood in the rain. If you don't get a vote for that game, I'm going to hold my own protest at Crown for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. But uh, I'd hate to, uh, as you said, steal some votes off. Errol and Haynes and Chad, as, as the later gets in the season, I think they those boys might be a sniff. Um, in the count as the as the year goes on. I love it. I just like that Alex basically was like, no, nah, I'm the reason we won that game. Uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things like when you like when you watch a sport, like if you like I, I'm an Arsenal fan for like eight weeks in a row, I wore the same shirt and then they won. Then they lost to Bayern Munich and I changed shirts. It's just a yeah, yeah, one yeah. Of those. It's superstitious. It's a, yeah, it's superstitious. Exactly. Like actually that's a good one. Is there any weird superstitions in the change room before games? 
Um, not really. Everyone's kind of got their own um, routine. And as I said, I've been lucky to play this was 60 and out. I played a lot of games of footy with um, the same group of people. So you're kind of used to what each and every individual kind of gets up to and who to talk to and who wants to be left alone and uh, who's getting in the zone. And uh, but no, in terms of superstitions, not really. Everyone's just got a routine, eat well, sleep well, um, prepare well. Um, that's, that's about it from, from what I know. Who's got the worst music taste? Oh, yeah. Oh, it depends because uh, a couple of the older boys like Sam Ray and Parksy can um, listen to some heavy metal to get them <laughs> get them G'd up, but um, that doesn't that doesn't sit too well with uh, with a couple of the other boys um, pre-game. So it's a hard balance to find pre-game to keep everyone happy, but um, we we kind of have out outnumbered the the older brigade, I think, and, and it's a bit of a democracy at the moment. It feels like that, Swifty. That's a personal shot. Like I literally did that before our show yesterday, <laughs> playing metal. It just scared the kids. They're just like, what is this, James? I have no idea. And I'm like, shush, it's old person music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was great. I'm just like rocking out. But anyway, meanwhile, I don't know, Alex is listening to the Venga Boys or something. I don't know. Sure. Um, <laughs> that's all right. All right, Alex, I'm going to give you two more nuff questions. Right. Go nuts. Uh, yeah, so obviously the SCG this year, the vibes and the crowds have been immense. Uh, how is it feeling? Like, there's been obviously a couple of down years, but running out every game, knowing there's near enough to forty thousand packing out the SCG, and just the noise when the boys get on a roll. Surely it's it's something that you would have felt when you played a Collingwood or a Carlton, for example. But to have that at home must be like just give you that boost when you need it. Yeah, it's actually been incredible this year. Um, we cracked, I think, seventy thousand members um, a couple of weeks ago, and which is a record for the club and to have, yeah, as you said, near on 40,000 every week at home, regardless of time or weather, um, it's been incredible. And as you said, to get that boost when we get on a roll is, um, has been massive for us. And yeah, it's been incredible to run out to each and every week. One more, Alex. Go no, I'm good. That's my, that's my final right, well, one. Well, my enough one is like, you're known as one of the best tacklers in the AFL. Is there a secret to a good tackle? Uh, well, at the moment, it's not slinging anyone to the ground that's 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 keeping um keeping you in the clear is good at the moment but yeah i'm just just something that um was made clear to me when i got drafted that was a strength of mine and and if i could bring that um to the forefront of a game um that was my role and horse made that clear pretty early on and um didn't really care how many disposals i got or um, it was just about my pressure and intensity around the ball, and that's something I've um, looked to keep since then. Nice one. I love that. Hey, and also, if you'd kick nine goals in a game, would you want to get subbed off oh. at the end? Like, what do we reckon? <laughs> well, I, I actually, once the game finished, I went up to him and everyone was getting around Joel. I was like, oh, how many did you kick? Because I, I was like, oh, he played well. I was like, I didn't, I had no, no, no. You would have thought that the midfield group would have an idea of who to kick the ball to. To get to get ten, and I had no idea that he had had nine. So, yeah, but I, I don't think he was too happy. But as he said after the game, um, nine's a pretty a pretty good achievement, and um, yeah, he's a pretty humble character, Joel. So hopefully, he does it again. And he gets another chance. Love it. All right. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you for joining us, James. Can you placate Alex and just sort of say what are you thirteen and two so far? Like here we go. Like the rest of the season's going to be awesome. What do we reckon? Hey, life's great at the moment. I'm ha- I'm loving it. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is good. Um, it's obviously a pretty uh, good spot to sit when you're 13 and two at this point of the season. And uh, a loss on the weekend, obviously disappointing. We didn't play um, very well, but um, we've had a great week of reviewing that, and we think that we've taken a, um, a fair bit out of it. So um, yeah, we've still got room to improve, which I think is very exciting when you're sitting 13 and two. So hopefully, um, onwards and upwards for the rest of the year. That's pretty good. There you go. It's been James Rowbottom. We call him Cheeks for a couple of reasons. There we go. Look at those puddums. That's amazing. He's got great hair, great cheeks. He's a legend. Thanks for joining us, James. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. All right. How good was that chat with James yeah. Rowbottom? Stats awesome. What would you reckon of that? Oh, I was, I was missing out. I was sad I wasn't there, but that was absolutely awesome. He was great. Well, he did actually yeah. specifically request that you weren't there. That's yeah. right. So yeah, we have a pass. He, he, yeah. we, he yeah. checked out the show before coming yeah. on. So His mistake was actually allowing Alex yeah. though, to be on it because it just got weird. <laughs> he was excited. It was it was good. Very good. You should, I've never seen him. So Well, actually, I've seen him more nervous than like, our Supercoach draft where he absolutely bottled it. Pretty funny. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, just gets nervous under pressure to say, man, Alex Donnelly. And then he's sitting yeah. there with like, James Rowbottom like a uh, – I uh, know, like a giggly little schoolgirl just going, oh, my God, I'm meeting my hero. I love it. Yeah, great hair, though. Yeah. Just all-time hair. Does. 
Anyway, <laughs> let's do the rest of the show. The Coleman and Brownlow updates. We've just started instigating this because, I mean, the Brownlow update gets very, very interesting. Yeah. We gave away the two-thirds of the season Brownlow last week. If we were going to give the Brownlow away right now, gentlemen, who wins it? Mine's or, dependent on how this tribunal goes on. Uh, well, I think the night. entire Brownlow is now actually dependent on how this uh, tribunal <laughs> yeah. appeal goes tonight. So, Because do we reckon Cripps got votes on Saturday night? He, I think he probably still got one or two because despite them losing it in the end, he yeah. was absolutely monumental at times. And I yeah. think if he's – if he, it wouldn't be a giant surprise if he sneaks a yeah. vote or two. See, uh, I think Heaney might get one or two as well against St Kilda. He was everywhere. Nice. I still think – Cripps is the leader in the clubhouse for a couple of the predictors. I think Lockie Neal is making a crazy charge. Is it, like a lot of the predictors have him 16 votes in the last so, eight weeks. And the umpires, as we know last year, when he shouldn't have even won a round. He has a good record. Yeah, but he has a record like last year. I think it was nine games where he had 30 possessions and 10 clearances. This year he's only done that four times. So if you're looking mm. at that, and we're he's like, oh, more, yeah, he's, he's making a charge. Votes. But he definitely got three on the weekend, but he still could be a, a couple of votes away. I think the one to keep an eye on is Bont. I don't think there's too Bond many. As well, yeah. There's been so many he injuries. Was average on the But there's the been so many injuries for this uh, Dogs team throughout the season. Yep. Like I don't know if Trelaw's taking too much away from him. I think. Like if, but if look they at keep past Liver kept like taking like stealing votes left, right, and center. Trelaw. Yeah. Trelaw. has been just, there. He's been very good. Probably. He's won a lot of the ball. I don't know if he's using it that well. Bond had a quiet week last week, but outside of that, I think he's the one to just keep an eye on. But if they keep losing, he's not going to be doing when Cripps was getting forty and two and getting the three votes that year. He won it. I Who don't, says they're going to keep on losing? That's the question. It's like. The line, they're at the line yeah. of demarcation right now. They're <laughs> eight and eight. Lose, okay, so, well, Norton won't be playing this weekend because he was concussed. So, you know, there's potential for another loss, and it's Carlton, so. They're pretty good. Carlton could absolutely 100% bottle that too. That so. would be funny. I don't know. It's a weird one. It could be set up yeah. for a big, big, big bont run. Uh, any other I'm names? i on Errol. Uh, Dacos, we haven't even talked about Dacos. Dacos. I, I think he's very close to Cripps, Neil, Cripp, uh, sorry, Cripps, Neil, Dacos. Merritt is the other one that people say, but he's dropped off yeah. a little bit, I'd say. Uh, he was best on ground last week. Yeah, he was yeah, literally yeah, three votes I'm on sorry, Friday In night. the last month, he hasn't yeah. got those big Errol three votes. and Noah so. Anderson. Noah, Noah Anderson be with amazing one just coming out of the blue. It, it, My beloved Noah But he might have got one or two votes on Saturday for, in the North or, game. May, maybe. They've lost by four points and he was clearly the best player. Sheasel, Sheasel McCurcher and Anderson. They're the three players. Well, Sam McCurcher's going to get Sam three. Day, I think, was better. He went off in the third quarter. I think Stats Boy might have gotten one as well just for cheering the boys Just cheering us on, yeah. But I think my Thoughts at the top of it, probably Cripps, Bont, mm. at the end of the season, probably Dacos. At the moment, maybe Neil. I think he might have I think Neil's there. my second favourite. I just feel like there's going to be too much cannibalising between the Sydney guns. Yep. Between Warner, Heaney, Goulden. I don't know if there's enough votes if, to go around. If Heaney does get a week, oh, I hope he doesn't uh, get the most votes because I hate when that happens, when they, when they get the most hey, votes. If, and if Heaney loses that to win the Norm Smith in the flag, it's all right. Exactly. But He'll if he that. does actually get rubbed out, I just want a camera on Alex's face the entire like, brown look. Oh, out. he's just in the like, lead. <laughs> just a super cut of just every time I'm, he gets three votes, I Heaney, three votes. Oh, <laughs> that first go. 10 weeks yeah, is going to suck. Yeah, yeah. I'm also on Errol at good odds, so let's okay. go Errol. Yep. All right. The Coleman update. Charlie. Get a Kirk, kick. Wow. He was uh, worrisome on the weekend against GWS. He got towed by Jack Buckley. I hated every second of that game, apart from where Harry McFive went Harry McFive. Uh, the 46 goals for Kerno. this was meant to be a couple of weeks where he could feast. He has not. No. He's only three goals ahead of Ben King. Who was Max King on the weekend. He literally got one goal, missed from the goal square once. He was horrible. I think he lost his uh, lost his powers. So, so as soon as Max goes down, Ben King, the twin. He was horrible. Just gone. Aiden Core yeah. killed him, but yeah. Sure. Outside of that, Hogan's up to 41. He's after, the one. He could make a late charge so with that five Hogan goals. Hogan was my pick early on in the season, you might remember, yeah. where he was, he was like, leading. Let's he booted stacks. like 16 in three weeks. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind that. Hogan could absolutely go on a tear. Harry McFive is on 39 as well, well after his big five and then the J train. Jakey he could have, you look at the next two games. GWS have Richmond here Ooh. at the MCG on Sunday. They've got Gold Coast in Sydney. So as we know, Gold Coast away from home. Could be 100 Bad. Point. Got the Ds and then they got Hawks at home. So if he gets a couple of fours and fives in there. Ooh. See what happens. I still trust Kerno to get away with it. Yeah, Hogan yeah, has only kicked more than two goals once, which is on the weekend, in the last seven weeks. Yep. So he's been out of form. Tough one. All right, anything else you want to hit on in the midweek madness show, gentlemen? Uh, uh, they've just literally announced as we're uh, going through this, Dan McStay is going to play VFL this weekend. Nice one. So he's almost, they really need so him back. Oh. Yeah, so he'll probably play one or two weeks in the VFL, then straight back in. No mind check. I just found it weird how like they were like gushing about, oh, 
Just think of the possibilities when we get Dan McStay back. He wasn't that good at the start. It's Dan Dan McStay. What is the average? One and a half goals a game. He's a big guy. That's right. It was like, oh, Jeremy Howe's like, we're licking our lips at getting him back. It's like, okay. Jeremy Howe's a backman and he's a better fan. He's not playing this weekend either, Jeremy Howe. Just give him a kiss then if you're licking your lips. Just go on. Give us a big (laughs) big old smooch. That'd be nice. What do you have? Seven goals. No, sorry. 20 goals, 14 games last year. Yeah, see? Okay. All right, well, that'll do us for the Wednesday AFL Today Show for today. We'll be back tomorrow with the AFL Today Show tomorrow for the Thursday Night Team's AFL Today Show tomorrow. Uh, thanks to Alex Donnelly for jumping on. Cheers, Jim. He didn't punch any walls or any stats guys, which yeah. is kind of weird. I was a bit surprised. It's because the appeal is going ahead, I think. It sort of calmed me back down. Maybe that's what they did this for, stats guy. They're like, Alex is actually just like, remember the, I think it's a teacher in uh, The Simpsons or like the teacher in Daria with the bulging with eye? The big, yeah, yeah. That's Alex for the last three days, just been nonstop. It's been pretty fun. I've been in denial, just he's, he's, he's going to be playing this weekend. So like, I'm, I'm living, I'm living, you don't the, even need him this week. It's exactly, we're playing North. Exactly, yeah. I think he gets off. Stats boy. Thank you very much. As per usual, I mean, no problems, buddy. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> he said the same. <laughs> Remember to smash a like for AFL today across all the socials. See us doing lots of fun stuff. Uh, YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X. You can also check out the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, Euros, yeah. semifinals, yes. finals, chaos. NBA Australia, we have a big free agency winners and losers show going up around that, as well as some more boomers fun content. Chat with Josh Giddy, chat with Dyson Daniels. Why don't you subscribe to NBA Australia? Get right around it. NFL Australia as well as hold all tickets. All the good stuff right there. Subscribe, star, and like all of them. Or send Stats Guy just to stand outside your bedroom window and just be weird. That's what he does. Get around him like, I don't know, John Platten getting around a perm in 1986 before he went on to win a Brownlow. Tied with Pogger, I think that year. Not bad. Not bad at all. Remember when key forwards would win Brownlows? Yeah. What a that world. Was so cool. Isaac Rucks, Haney at the start of his eye. I need to move in the midfield. Nice one. All right, that's it. We'll catch you tomorrow for more AFL today. Until then, remember, look up yourselves and footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.